that I've been associating with this week. I can't recall a time when I've met so many of God's people who are hungering and thirsting after righteousness. I've talked with people who put aside sin by the grace of God. I've spoken with individuals who have made right some long-standing wrong. I love that little lady that came to me and said, you know, I'm so burdened to make right a misunderstanding with somebody else. And when you mention that if we're not able to do it now, but we're planning to do that as soon as we get back home, because it's physically impossible, and it will not prevent us from being anointed by the Holy Spirit, she said, my heart just lifted up within me. And the Lord knows the intent of the human heart, doesn't he? He knows the intent. And I've spoken with people this week who are greatly burdened because they want to become more effective for the Lord. That is a beautiful thing to meet people who say, Hey, I am a gifted person. I do have abilities. And by the grace of God, I want to become fruitful for the Lord. I want to make a saving impact on the world. I want him to flow through me. And that's how I can honestly stand here this morning and say that I believe the Holy Spirit has been moving in a very special way this week. Because in the scriptures I read in John, the 16th chapter, the beautiful words of Jesus, beginning at verse 8. And when he is come, that is, the person of the Holy Spirit, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin, because they believe not on me. And I have encouraged you throughout this week in order to prepare for the beautiful experience of being anointed by God and thus to give him the privilege of making that saving impact through you, there is the necessity of searching one's heart and laying that sin on the Lamb of God who taketh away the sin of the world of righteousness because I go to my Father and ye see me no more. The beauty of the New Testament story is that despite the fact that the Lord was crucified and risen and ascended to heaven, his righteousness is continually available and made real within each one of us through the inner witness of the Holy Spirit. What a privilege is ours, isn't it? I've had people approach me this week and just praise the Lord. I was watching for that because the evidence of the moving of the Spirit is the conviction that righteousness does not come from human effort, but is a free gift of a gracious God who in Jesus provided a way of escape for the ungodly. I just want to praise him again this morning for that, don't you? And thirdly, he brings a conviction of judgment. The awareness that man is not the author of his own destiny. That there is a God to be reckoned with, isn't there? A God who is still in control of this earth. 
but a God who has revealed himself in a marvellous manner and who in these last days has determined to have for himself a people who are convicted of sin and of righteousness and judgment. The whole world needs to see Jesus through his people, don't they? And that is our blessed and holy privilege. You know, I've been thinking a great deal about this morning. Somebody asked me yesterday in a very valid question, why have we waited till Sabbath morning? And my answer to that is there was no reason to wait because many of you, I've seen it, have already been anointed by the Holy Spirit. But the baptism of the Spirit is a daily experience. On the other hand, there are many of you to whom an understanding of this beautiful issue is somewhat new and refreshing. Is that true? And I said to myself, what happened at Pentecost when the believers came together, when they put aside their differences, when they confessed their unbelief, when they came close together in Christian love and the beautiful prayer that they prayed. It's the only element of the Pentecostal prayer I haven't shared with you yet and I'm going to use the words of Ellen White herself. They did pray to put aside their unbelief. You've all done that this week, haven't you? I'm overwhelmed. Haven't you? I hope you have because having come here this morning seeking that blessing, I presume by the grace of God you've put aside your unbelief even in those situations that you could not see the end from the beginning. Praise the Lord for that. They confessed their sin to God. They put aside their differences and the final element, I'm so glad we have the actual words of the prayer they prayed. Do you know what they prayed for finally? Beautiful words to use us here. A fitness to meet men. Isn't that beautiful? Having put aside their differences, confessed the sin and unbelief, they now in faith prayed for a fitness to meet men, that the words they spoke from now on would have that saving impact on people's lives. People often ask me, what is your definition then of the baptism of the Holy Spirit? I am led to exclaim, a fitness to meet men, how God could take a Peter and speak through him to the saving of 3,000 souls. That's a fitness to meet men, isn't it? And I want you to make it a daily prayer from this moment on. Pray for that fitness and as you open your life with the pipe unclogged, and invite God to the holy oil to flow through you, the fitness will be measured as it impacts on the lives of others. Do you believe it? Individuals that you will be speaking with will suddenly be convicted of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. I hope you believe that this morning. And having prayed for a fitness to meet men, they did then the most beautiful thing. And the Lord has impressed me this morning. This would be a fitting climax for our final devotional hour together. And I'm reading from Acts chapter 2. Some wonderful verses here. Acts the second chapter. Reading from verse 41. And they that gladly received his word were baptized. 
And the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Wouldn't it be a wonderful thing this time next year? Camp meeting time. If every one of us here, how many does this church hold? Does anybody know? Approximately. 300 people? Or 800 people? I want you to think about this this morning. Wouldn't it be an incredible covenant of faith that we could take together this morning? That every one of us who has come earnestly seeking the baptism of the Holy Spirit this week could go out from this camp filled with the Spirit, open vessels for the saving knowledge of God to flow through us into our own communities and come back here by this time next year and praise the Lord because we have seen more than what happened at Pentecost. Is that possible? 3,000 souls only represent four each for every one of us sitting here this morning. Think about that. To me, the great proof of what we've been talking about this week will be, and even if I'm not invited back to take the devotional meetings next year, which I probably won't be, because they like variety at camp meetings and I don't blame them, but I would like Elder Wisby the privilege to come back and see this group again and to hear from them the victories that the Lord has given in precious souls being gathered into his kingdom. It's the acid test of that anointing of the Holy Spirit. I think you should make a covenant like that this morning. I think you should determine by the grace of God that if 120 people at Pentecost could be used of the Lord to see an inflow like that in one day, What could 800 people in Potomac Conference accomplish for God as they become instruments of his saving grace? The sinners in your community are going to be convicted as soon as you get back home. Your influence in that community is going to tell because you've left this place praying Give me a fitness to meet men. People that you've been speaking to for years are going to say to themselves, this is not the same person. They are going to be led to inquire. Tell me about your God. Do you believe it? Or are you sitting there in doubt this morning? I want to tell you, we haven't begun to see what the Lord is willing to do when 800 people filled with the Spirit move out in his power, praising him. Notice the rest of this chapter. Verse 42, they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayer. And fear came upon every soul. That's something we haven't seen in communities for a long time, isn't it? We haven't seen the fear of God coming upon people. Have we? We haven't seen it for a long time. And all that believed were together and had all things common and sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. And they, continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. And verse 47 is a special verse. Notice what they did. Praising God and having favor with all the people. Isn't that beautiful? They spent their time praising God and having favor with all the people. And what did the Lord do? 
He added daily such as should be saved. Does that challenge your mind this morning? Does it? To leave this place anointed by the Spirit, to have favor with all the people, to enter into a habit of praising God, and what's the Lord going to do? He is going to add daily such as should be saved. The Lord has convicted me again this morning that the Soma Conference is sitting on a gold mine where the gold just needs to be mined. And because we've got 800 miners here this morning, each of whom is becoming equipped in the Lord, how can we but fail to have the most glorious time of soul winning that this conference has ever seen? Is it going to happen? Of course it's going to happen. Not because we are going to make it happen, but because we are going to get out of the way and let God make it happen. And by getting out of the way, we've cleared the pipes and we're going to give the Holy Spirit his wonderful opportunity to do what he does so well. Do you feel like praising God this morning? I thought about this morning, I said, we have to have a praise session this morning. We have to lift up our hearts and praise the God of heaven. I have a lot of reasons for praising God this morning. Not the least of which the beautiful victories that I have seen and heard about in the lives of many people this week. I just want to praise the Lord because some people must have got up very early this morning to be here from Washington in time for this meeting. Can you praise the Lord for people like that? And two of these people are very dear friends of mine because having been anointed in the Spirit, their lives have become a beautiful and radiant influence. I told you by faith yesterday that we would hear personally, didn't I, from the person whom the Lord has used to open the door into the World Bank. Didn't I tell you that yesterday? Well, she's here this morning. I don't know what time she got up this morning, but I do know this, that she's sitting here this morning and she wants to praise the Lord. Samir, why don't you come on up here this morning? She's sitting here this morning, by the way, with a sister whom the Lord has been very gracious to lead her to share her love for the Lord with. Samia, we're so glad. What time did you get up here this morning? I woke up at 3 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> you woke <laughs> up at 3 o'clock. Right, 3 o'clock. I want to tell you something about this lady. She may have Zacchaeus back there in her genealogy <laughs> somewhere, <laughs> but she is not short on power, believe oh. me. It's and, God's power, believe me. And having been through the most traumatic personal experience herself, sought the anointing of the Holy Spirit that her gifts may become operative. And what has the Lord done? It's like a man in the World Bank said to me the other day, none of us here are safe when Samia is around. That's how they feel about this lady. She's a beautiful person. Her faith is strong. Why don't you tell this morning as briefly as you can, I'm known for my brevity, so I'll pass it on to you, as briefly as you can, just those few little events that led up to you becoming so used of the Lord to break down the entrance into that institution and to have those 20, 25 people like we have now earnestly seeking the Lord together every week. Why don't you tell the folks here? And I'm sure they're going to be more and more with the grace of God. It started with a tragedy that we went through in November. My dear young brother, who's 24 years old, being so depressed with the world, and the only Christian, by the way, at home. We come from a background that's very unfamiliar to most of you. We come from a bruised, 
background, which is only in Lebanon. I'm Lebanese. And uh, they are a combination of Christianity and Islam. They believe in Christ, but they don't believe he was ever crucified. So with this background, my family do not know the Lord as much as I know him. I became a Seventh-day Adventist at Middle East College in Beirut. Thank the Lord for missionary colleges like this. <laughs> At that time, I was not very much convicted, and I didn't know, and I didn't understand the working of the Holy Spirit in people's hearts until I stepped out and I said, Lord, I cannot do it for myself. I tried so much, I can't. I'm a failure. Would you please take me from this situation I'm in and lift me up, and I am ready to dedicate my life to you. But then I really just went on dragging with my faith until the time I was shocked with the sudden death of my brother, who decided to put an end to his life, touched himself in the heart, and he was gone. It was very, very tragic to us. He was dear, he was a wonderful young man. I tried to introduce the Lord to him before, I, before he died, and we had spent so much time over the telephone talking about it. And he said, you're the only person I can talk to. And he sent me a beautiful letter telling me how much he agrees with me on a lot of the things that I believe in. And thank the Lord for that, because I know that the Lord assures me that one of these days I'm going to see my brother again. And what a wonderful hope we have. You know, as Christians, we have a privilege. We have a real privilege. And you wouldn't know it unless you come from a background like mine. I always thought that the Lord is somebody standing, God is standing on the clouds, just looking at us, whenever we make a sin or something, he grabs us by the neck and just, you know, punishes us. But that's not what God is in this book. Amen. God is love, and that's what I discovered through the power of the Holy Spirit. So I started thinking after this tragedy, I said, either I have to keep on letting it drag me and just kill me after that, and I got real sick, or am I going to get out of it? And with the grace of God, I said, Lord... I don't know what's the reason that you allowed this to happen, but I know one thing, you're not going to leave us all, my family and myself, in this tragic event. You're going to give us strength, you're suffering with us, and you're going to give us the victory through it all. And you know, I was hesitant to ask my family if, if I could uh, bring a Seventh-day Adventist pastor to come and give the prayer in, in church, when, in chapel, at uh, the funeral. But they said they would. And so, Elder Kiyu, who was the president of our college, came and he gave the prayer. And it was such a beautiful prayer. And he told them also about the patriarchs and so on. He referred to our old background. And then he said, you know, but we Christians, we believe in one thing, that the Son of God was resurrected and he gave us life. And we have the hope of having a new life again when he comes back again here. And all the dead shall arise and meet him. And this is our blessed hope. And that affected my family very much. But at the World Bank now, my boss was really feeling frustrated because I was depressed and I wasn't doing my job as he thought should be done. And true, at that time, I couldn't function very well. My trouble was really taking me so badly that I couldn't really even do anything. But then I said, I better concentrate on other people's problems. So I started going around and seeing how these girls are doing and everybody. And whenever they have a problem, I try to just counsel with them and lead them to the Word. That's what really gave me strength. And when they saw what the Word has done to me and what God has done to me through His Word, they, one woman said, Samia, instead of us, I feel ashamed. She said, I have such a petty problem like this and you're really making it your concern. I should be the one comforting you, not you comforting me. But then I had to decide to leave that office because it was too much for me. And they said, we're going to lose you. I said, no, you will not lose me. We are friends in Christ and we're going to keep on together. Let's have a Bible meeting every once in no time. And we will all meet together. We were only six people and everybody was excited about it. So we started having, of course, thanks to Elder Liverset because he was the one who led me to understand that God has a special gift for every person. Don't you think so? When you really give him this, this, you know, privilege of entering into your life, he will do a lot of miracles. And he will let you discover what your real strength is. 
I really feel that I am brought up and God has a special purpose for me to be an evangelist for him. Not because of any strength of mine. The more I behold him, the smaller I feel. One of these days I might disappear because I, if I think too much, you know. But believe me, if you let him take your life, he will work miracles. And then we started these classes. And then I invited Elder Liversitz to come and talk to us one of these days. And he came in, and they were so much impressed by telling them about their, what God had given them of gifts and for the Holy Spirit, the love of God. What a wonderful friend he is. How he never leaves us, no matter how far we stay away from him. Then they said, could he come again? I said, well, don't ask me, ask him. So a few of them came to him and told him about it. So then he, he said he will come again. But then we started praying about it. I told them, do you want him to come always and give you some of the seminar that he gave us? And they said, yes, great. I said, well, you pray about it. Because I believe that the power of prayer is stronger than any power in the world. So they started praying, and we prayed about it. The next uh, Thursday was, we, I came to class, and I was talking to him, and I said, well, they want you to, be, to come back again. He said, you know, the Holy Spirit is convicting me that I should be there in that, with that group. They are such nice people. And we started these classes. And I tell you, the more every day I see somebody that I can tell them about the class, that one of these days, I'm sure we're going to start so many classes in that World Bank. We are 6,500 employees from all over the world. And you know, if we can just affect only 20 people, or 22 or 25, I'm sure we can go ahead and affect 6,500. At least touch their heart in a way or the other. And people are needing somebody to be so passionate and so loving and to show the love of God with our actions, with our lives. One little thing I want to say about as a liversit, just before I, I finish. Just yesterday we had a curfew type of uh, fire uh, evacuation or whatever from the building, drill, power, uh, fire drill evacuation. So we evacuated the building, all of us. And one woman that comes to his class, she came to me and she said, Tavia, wh what church do you go to? I said, I'm a Seventh-day Adventist. I'm a Christian first. I'm a Seventh-day Adventist, and I go to Sligo Church. She said, is Dr. Liversidge a Seventh-day Adventist? I said, yes, he is. She said, you know what? Because there are few people, she said, I will not point names, but some of them came to discourage me and tell me, you shouldn't go to that class because these people are teaching the Seventh-day Adventist principles. But you know what she said? I said, I, I kept on smiling, you know. When you're sure about the truth and you know that what you're doing is the work of God, no matter who stands in your way, you can really just be stronger than they are. Yeah. And as if they don't exist, I just listened to her and I said, it's not, she said, herself, I didn't say anything. She said, I told these people that this man talks from the word. It's not his words that he's saying, but everything he says is from this book, from the Bible. She said, I don't think that this person can talk anything but the truth if he speaks the word. I said, you're right. Thank God that you understand the real reason why Dr. Levisit is coming here. He's coming here to introduce people to Christ. If these people decide to belong to a church or the other, that's not his concern. His concern is to introduce them to Christ. So thank the Lord for people like him and thank the Lord for not giving up on us and bringing us closer to him day by day through the Holy Spirit. I feel today that I'm baptized by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Don't you? Amen. Thank God for that. Thank you very much, Samia. Can you see what I mean? What hope do these people have in the World Bank? <laughs> and we haven't seen anything yet. We're hoping that a number of our group of 25 will be discipled and start other groups within that institution. And before long, what an impact is going to be seen there. Anybody else out there really wanting to praise the Lord this morning? I have no idea exactly what I wanted to say, but the Spirit told me to get up and come up here. <laughs> and I'll tell you something, that was Grandma Shooty. Now, she's one of the first Adventists I ever met, and I love her dearly. 
And if she can stand there and tremble like she was, <laughs> believe me, then, uh, and I've looked up to her for so long, then I guess I don't have to worry about coming up here and speaking. This has been a wonderful week for me, too. I've learned so much. And the main thing I've learned is love. And I guess I came up here for some more affirmation. Amen. Because you people have been so beautiful. I stood up and I asked for it at the first of the week, just like you told us to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you've been giving it to me. And I've made new friends. Why don't, you tell, them, why don't you tell them about your experience yesterday? This lady wrote down, how many things did you write down? Three. She wrote down by faith three gifts that she believes the Lord has given her. And she went to a friend, and without revealing to the friend what she'd written down, she asked the friend to affirm her in terms of what gifts and abilities do you see within me that I could use for the Lord. How many of those three were affirmed back to you? Two out of three. Two out of the three came back to her. This person saw those identical things in her. But a little earlier than that, you had expressed a little something. Was it doubt or what? It was Why doubt. don't you tell them what you'd said a little earlier? Well, I had such a struggle. I sat there and looked at the list. You know, we have a nice list and define them. We know what the gifts are. And I just kept looking and thinking, I don't have any of these. You know, what do I have? Nothing. And I kept looking and kept looking and I said, well, I sure kind of would. I leaned toward a couple of them and finally he said, you must put down three, aren't they? <laughs> so I picked them out, you know, and there was my three. And um, What affirmation, huh? The Lord's been good to you. You're leaving this camp with a sure knowledge that yes, you right. have the gifts to be successful in ministry. Praise the Lord and for you that. Know, this blessed sister here with the red, I don't know who she is, but she stole my glory. <laughs> Um, when I stood up previously, I said that I want to leave this place with the glow on my face like Moses had when it came down the mountain. And sister, I hope I take it home with me. Amen. Can Amen. you see it? Yes. Is it there? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Amen. I heard someone saying this morning that their heart was doing flip-flops, and that's the reason why I'm up here, too. Mine's just about ready to jump out of my chest. I wanted to tell all of you of a, an experience that I had also this week in my company. Um, I was baptized about four or five weeks ago. I made a recommitment of my life to the Lord after having been out of the church for a number of years. And I stopped doing all the things that I was doing before, wearing of jewelry and things, and, and people started to take notice. And this week, I was on the spur of the moment invited out to lunch by the man who is the assistant to the president of my firm, which I'm, I'm in a company that's going very rapidly. It's a high-tech company. I'm in a professional position, um, but I'm, I'm sort of a low man on the totem pole at this point, but I've, the Lord has, has directed me to the people that are at the top of the organization, the president, his assistant, and they've all taken notice because of some, some events that have taken place. And I was invited to go out to lunch with this man this last week. And we got to talking at lunch. And he said, tell me, Mary, um, I, I realize, I recognize that you've changed so much. And I was just asking your boss the other day, what has come over this woman? You know, why is she not wearing all this jewelry? And why is she, does she look different? And so I, I took a deep breath and I thought, okay, Lord, here it comes. I'm, I'm just going to tell it straight. <laughs> so... I said, Milt, I looked at him and said, Milt, do you really want to know? Yes, I want to know. So I started telling him the love that I found with God and with Jesus and, and the things that he's done for me in my life. And this fellow is, you know, he's all decked out with things. And he's, a, he's a Southern Baptist, a very lovely person. But I feel that he really needs to have more of the love of Christ so, so Christ can affect a change on his life too. The seed is planted. And I started telling him about some of the things in God's Word, that how the Bible interprets itself, and how, um, how it really speaks very clearly about the state of the dead and a lot of, a lot of the beliefs that we have. And he said, well, you know, a lot of men have different interpretations of the Bible. And I said, well, it, the Bible really interprets itself. And so we kept, continued to our lunch discussion on the way back to the office. He turned to me and he said, Mary, are there some special Bible verses that you would like me to look up? And, well, off the top of my head, you know. Um, so I, I told him that we would, I, I would go home and write some down. So I went home and I stayed up till very, 
excuse me, early in the morning writing Bible verses down, but I was impressed that I shouldn't give them to him on a piece of paper. So when I go back to work this week, I'm going to invite him over to my home to have a Bible study, and I really believe that the Lord will work strongly in his life. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. I love my kind Heavenly Father and my precious Savior, and I came to camp meeting looking for a blessing, and I chose the class on the Holy Spirit and the one on how to study the Bible. And I've been greatly blessed, and I thank the Lord for it. And I pray that he will lead me and guide me in making an important decision, and I do want to witness for him. Amen. Thank you very much. I can assure each one of you that I had no intentions of standing up here this morning when I left my cabin. But the Lord so impressed me, and it has been such a beautiful week. I don't know when I've enjoyed camp meeting so much, and I have been here somewhere between 25 and 30 years of camp meeting. And uh, there has been many beautiful camp meetings, but I have to say that uh, the Spirit has been revealed I think more in people's lives in this camp meeting than any other I have attended. Uh, I had to get up here and give praise to my Savior because 13 years ago, according to the doctor's records, I would not be here. But the Lord has been so good to me, and I feel that I have not done what I should for him. And I am just praying this week that these pipes will be unclogged that I can go back home and I can witness to those people. I'm the only one from my church that is sure at camp meeting, which makes me very sad because I realize what they have missed by not being here. And I will take back what I can to them, but I cannot begin to take back what has been given to me. I'm very scared. I've never talked in front of anybody. The Holy Spirit talked to me and wanted me to come up here, and I praise the Lord, and I want the Holy Spirit to, he may use me, that I may be a witness for him, that others may come to him. Amen. Thank you very much. That took a little bit of courage, didn't it? Praise the Lord for that. Thank you. I'm not going to say too much. Um, but I just want to add my praise to Jesus Christ. And Bill, thank you for presenting the message in a clear form. The, the cloud has been lifted in my life also. I've seen Christ's righteousness as I've never seen it before. It's beautiful. To know that I am loved, that we are loved, it's a beautiful thing. And I think some of you know that Elaine and myself are very busy and active in our church. But I think we've been active in concentrating on some of the, the wrong things. Well, the right things, but, you know, church activity. But I think this week has proven to me that we need to be active in seeking souls. Amen. That we need Amen. to find people in our community, our next-door neighbors, and present them the message that God has given, that we are loved, and that Christ's righteousness does save us. Thank you. Bill. Thank you very much. Both of you. I'm taking a little bit of advantage, Bill. I happen to be standing on my feet when you made that last suggestion. <laughs> I, I thought maybe it was time to finish. <laughs> <laughs> that really wasn't why. I had looked outside to see it was raining, and I decided to stand there and ask the Lord to make it stop somehow. We've got a lot of people coming today. We don't need the rain. I also need the privilege of sharing because I'm thankful for what's happened in these early morning meetings. We get so wrapped up, some of us, in the program of camp meeting. Herb Breckel works all year long and he's sitting here in his quiet way again this morning to make it happen. Some of us work along, of course. We get so wrapped up in the program, and quite frankly, this morning meeting is about the only one I get to during the course of the day, Bill, with the exception of the evening, and it's been extremely meaningful. I've wondered about emotion. All my life, I've wondered about emotion because I don't feel a lot of emotion. I'm not an emotional person. 
But I believe in Jesus, and I'm so thankful for what we've seen here this week. As I go from board to board in your churches and have the opportunity to visit, some of the meetings have been, and some of you have been there with us. Some of them have not been pleasant. And for some reason, I just feel that we're not going to experience a whole lot more of those kinds of meetings. The time is right that the Lord should lead and we should not be wrestling inside our boards, inside our churches, but to let the Spirit lead. And I'm so thankful today, a pastor, during the course of this week, in fact, just yesterday morning, leaned over and gave me this little text of scripture that he said he claims every Sabbath before he preaches. And I want to claim this for my life today and, and for years as well. My message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power. I claim that, and I claim it for all of you, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you. I feel good, don't you? I'm glad I belong to Jesus. This morning, of course, the, the climax of our week together is a sincere, serious, very serious seeking of that most beautiful of the promised blessings, the special anointing of the Spirit for service. I'll tell you how we're going to work things this morning because this will lead to the conclusion of our meeting. You enjoyed these testimonies? Yeah. I could listen to them all day. I'm sorry we didn't start at 5 o'clock instead of 6.30. We could have had an extra hour of testimony. We're going to listen now to a very beautiful song, a song that has been very meaningful to me. He touched me. Oh, he touched me. And oh, what joy has filled my heart. Isn't that a beautiful song? And as we listen to this song this morning, during the singing of the song, those of you who by faith having confessed your unbelief, having put aside sin and differences between one another, and who have reached the point, as I've heard so many here this morning express, you have reached the point of being able to say, Lord, I'm a little scared because I know that the anointing of the Spirit is going to mean me becoming a lot more active for you. And in the past, maybe I haven't been that active, but I know that the baptism of the Spirit gives me a freedom to speak for Jesus. And so this morning, Lord, Whatever gifts, abilities, whatever I have, touch me with your spirit. If my gift is teaching, make me a powerful teacher so that human lives will be convicted. If my gift is speaking, O oh Lord, make a saving impact through my words. If my gift is hospitality, may my home be known in that community as a place of refuge for those in need. If my gift is faith and prayer, lead me to organize a ministry of prayer where miracles are wrought in thy name. If my gift is discernment, help me to see in others their potential for God. If my gift is exhortation, make my words meaningful. 
that they will lead sinners to repentance, to renewing their lives in Jesus Christ. Whatever my gifts are this morning, Lord, I want them to become activated by the Holy Spirit. That is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The activation of the abilities that God has given me as a creative human being. But now that activation is going to focus me in the direction of saving ministry for Jesus. I tremble for all the sinners in your communities as your gifts become activated by the Holy Spirit. Like some of your testimony this morning, you're going to go back home and is the Lord going to make a saving impact through you? He certainly is. So as we listen this morning to the words of this beautiful song, He touched me. Oh, He touched me. If it's in your heart this morning and you seriously have reached the point of giving the Lord the privilege of activating your gifts for him. And that is a very serious place in life to arrive at. It means there's no holds barred. You are open to what he is going to use you for. If that's the desire of your heart this morning, as the song is coming to us, quietly leave your seat and slip out here this morning and fall down on your knees before the living God of heaven. There is no compulsion this morning. This is purely an individual matter between you and the Lord. If you choose not to come forward this morning, nobody is going to be pointing the finger at you and saying, hey, what's wrong with you? If you choose not to come forward this morning, you're telling God, well, Lord, I want this experience, but it may be I'm not yet at the place where I'm really willing for my gifts to be used in soul-saving ministry for you. Sit there quietly and pray, but Lord, I want to be willing. Pray that little prayer. Make me willing to be made willing. But if it is the desire of your heart, and you can honestly say this morning, you have followed the scriptural commands that always precede the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Quietly leave your seat and come forward this morning and kneel in prayer as the song is coming to us. Thank you. Keep playing, Ken. That's beautiful. We're going to do something a little bit different this morning. For 60 seconds. While the Lord is in the process of touching you this morning, I want you to do what we do in New Guinea. I want you to open your eyes this morning and I want you to look up. And just for 60 seconds this morning as Ken is playing and the Holy Spirit is moving, look up and cry out to him. Touch me. Touch me. Let's bow our heads in prayer this morning. By faith, claim the promise this morning. Because John said, There is one who cometh after me, whose shoelaces I am not even worthy to undo. I will baptize you with water 
But he will baptize you with fire, with the power of the living God. Oh, Father, this morning, you've touched us. Praise your holy name. By faith, Lord, on behalf of all these hungry people, I claim the beautiful promise of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Oh, Father, there are so many gifts and abilities represented here this morning. And with the unction to function, with the power of the living God in their hearts. These beautiful talents are going to become active in ministry for you. What power is going to go forth from this place? Thank you for being here this morning, for manifesting your presence in a calm, quiet and beautiful way and as we listen to that still small voice we think of that water pipe yesterday Lord some of us are tired of the drops we want to be immersed in your spirit and right at this moment Father by faith Open the windows of heaven and pour out such a blessing of your Holy Spirit that we will indeed be immersed as the torrent of your love is poured forth. I feel like exclaiming with the early believers this morning, <coughs> here is love in all its beauty because Jesus is present. And now by faith, Lord, I thank you for having heard and already done what we have come seeking you for. Thank you for touching our lives and giving us the anointing of your spirit and for the blessed privilege of becoming pipes through which the holy oil can flow unimpeded into the lives of those whom you are going to lead us to find for the kingdom of heaven. What a solemn and serious moment this is, Lord. In a special way right now, touch the leadership of this conference. Touch the pastors and these beautiful people, Father. Fulfill their every desire for you. And may this year be known as the year of the Holy Spirit the year when we, by your grace, got out of the way <clears throat> and we let you finish your work. <clears throat> what a God you are. What a Savior. What a friend. Help us to leave this place now, Father, with that calm assurance that what we've come seeking has already been given to us by a father who knows how to give good gifts to his children. Thank you again and again in Jesus' precious name. Amen.